First Peter chapter four, a great chapter, as you've discovered as you read it this week. This morning, we want to look at verses 10 and 11. As Peter tells us, as every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And if any man speaks, let him speak as an oracle of God. And if any man ministers, let him do it with the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God has given to each one gifts of grace. Peter refers to them as gifts of grace because we don't deserve them and we surely can't merit them. They are just God's expressions of his love for you. And even as a person wants to express love and we generally seek to do it through giving gifts because God loves you. He has given to each of us glorious gifts. Paul, writing to the church in Rome about these gifts of grace, said, having then gifts that differ according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, then let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. If ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that gives, let him do it with simplicity. Or he that rules, with diligence. And he that shows mercy, with cheerfulness. Now Paul tells us that all of these things are gifts of grace. Some people have the gift of giving. Some have the gift of mercy. Some have the gift of exhortation. Some have the gift of teaching. But each one of us has some gift from God, some particular capacity or ability at which we are adept. God has given to us just a natural penchant towards certain things. When he was writing to the Corinthians, Paul gave another list of the gifts of the Spirit. And in that list, he tells us that each of the gifts are given for the profit of the whole church. In other words, God doesn't give me a gift just that I might sit back and enjoy it. But he has given the gift that the whole church may profit through my exercise of that gift. Because God's love goes far beyond the borders of our own personal lives or beyond the borders of our church. God gives us gifts that we might use them to benefit and to bless others. So as you have received the gifts of God, you're to use those gifts in ministering the grace of God to others. As Peter said, being a good steward of the grace of God. Now, in the Bible... The steward was a person who was given the responsibility of taking care of another person's goods and affairs. The wealthy people in those days usually had a trusted slave that took care of all of the things of the household so that they didn't have to worry about them. If they had fields, this steward would make sure that 
They, the crops were all planted on time, harvested on time, brought in, and, and the wealthy people didn't have to worry about bank accounts or about buying things. Uh, the steward just took care of all of that, and that was the job of the steward, is to take care of another person's goods and their welfare. And so we are stewards of God's grace. God has given to us that responsibility of taking care of the things that he has entrusted to us. Jesus used uh, the stewards in different parables. He told in Luke 16 of a steward that was not faithful in his stewardship. He was an unfair steward. He had used his position for his own benefit rather than the benefit of his master's. And when his master discovered that this steward had been misusing his office, he called him into account and he said, straighten up the books, you're through. Fired him. There is a, another time when Jesus was talking to his disciples about his, the master's return and how important it was that the stewards and the servants keep busy doing the master's work even though the master wasn't there. So that when he returned because they didn't know when he was going to return or what time he might return, but when he did return, he would find them all busy and diligent doing the work of the master. After the parable, Peter said, Lord, is that parable for us or is it for everybody? And so Jesus, in response to Peter's question on the parable, said, who is the faithful and wise steward whom the Lord will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. When the Lord returns, blessed is that servant who is doing the work of the Lord diligently, responsibly. And so that basically is what Peter is telling us in our text. Use what God has given to you, those talents, those abilities, those gifts. Use them to minister to others the wonderful grace of God. Paul tells us that the most important thing for a steward is that, he be, is that he be found faithful. Faithful to that stewardship. So Peter said, if God has gifted you in speaking, if you speak, speak as a oracle of God. Now the word oracle in Greek is logia and uh, in classical Greeks, uh, in the times of the Greeks, uh, great prominence and glory, they had what they called oracles. And the people looked upon these oracles as more or less channelers for the gods. They thought that the gods spoke through the oracles for guidance and for direction for their lives. And so they would pay handsomely uh, to the oracle uh, when they were going to make a business venture or an investment or whatever. They would go to receive guidance from the gods. Of course, the oracle of Delphi was probably the most prominent and well-known of all of the oracles. And even to the present day, the ruins of the great temple uh, and the amphitheater there at Delphi can be visited. And uh, it was a place where 
people would come to receive ad advice and counseling from the gods because they felt that the gods spoke through these people. So he says that if you speak, speak as an oracle of God. In other words, speak the word of God. In the Old Testament, so often as the prophets would be prophesying, they would sort of preface their prophecies with the words, thus saith the Lord, or thus saith the Lord of hosts. And what they were doing is declaring, I am declaring to you the words of God, and thus were as an oracle speaking the word of God. So Peter is saying, if you speak, and that is a gift within the church, then speak as an oracle of God. In other words, speak the word of God to the people. In the Pentecostal traditions, in the public exercise of the gift of prophecy, so often those who will stand up and give a prophecy to the church will preface the prophecy with the words, Thus saith the Lord. I am very reluctant to use that phrase unless I am quoting scripture. And whenever I am quoting scripture, I can say with confidence, Thus saith the Lord. So in the ministry of teaching or in the ministry of speaking the word of God to people, we should speak, Peter is saying, God's word. And you can be assured and certain that you are speaking God's word if you're giving them the scriptures. Paul the apostle said, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. And that's really the way it happens. In my study, in prayer, waiting upon God, as I am going over the passage of Scripture, I look to the Lord and I trust to the Lord to speak to me to open up my understanding to that passage of Scripture, to enlighten my own mind. And as he does, I make my notes. And then as I stand before you, I seek to bring to you what has been brought to me by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So that... I always am comfortable when I can stand before you as Paul and say, for I received from the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And I have a great anointing of God's Holy Spirit as I am preparing the studies for you. And I am blessed as the Spirit of God just sort of opens up my own mind and my own understanding to the passage. And oftentimes I am more blessed in the study than I am in the delivery. Sometimes the delivery doesn't come forth smoothly. Sometimes it's sort of, you know, it, it just, I think, ooh, you know. <laughs> Help, Lord, you know. Uh, it didn't come out like I received it. In other words, there was such a tremendous... Uh, infilling as I was receiving it and yet there was a sort of a hesitancy in the outflow and then there are other times when there's a, a fabulous outflow and more comes out than what went in you know and, uh, and further inspiration comes as you're speaking and that's always an exciting time as there is that very fresh anointing even as you are speaking uh, the truths of God to people. Peter went on to say, if any man ministers, let him do it with the ability that God gives. 
Paul declared that he was made a minister according to the grace that was given unto him. And we all of us are to minister according to the grace that is given unto us. And there are many ministries within the body of Christ. My particular ministry, you might say, is a pulpit ministry. And God has given to me, and I recognize it as a gift from God, the gift of teaching. Now, to enhance the teaching, God has given to me the gifts of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and prophecy, so that the teaching is the exercise of these particular gifts that God has given. So you do it with the ability that God has given. Now, the pulpit ministry is just one of the many, many ministries in the church. I believe that every Christian is a minister of Jesus Christ. So that you could all say with all honesty and truth, if someone asks you, well, what do you do? You can say, well, I'm a minister of Jesus Christ. Now, I make my living by selling insurance, or I make my living by, but I'm a minister of Jesus Christ. For we should all realize that we are all called to be ministers. You see, the word minister literally means servant, one who serves. And I've been called as a servant of Jesus Christ. You've been called as a servant of Jesus Christ. And as a servant of Jesus Christ, he has a particular task for you to fulfill within the church, within the body, because we are to minister to one another according to the ability that God has given to us. And thus, the Lord has gifted people in many different ways. There are those who have the gift of music. They are just musicians naturally. It is a gift of God. Uh, you could practice the piano the rest of your life. And if you're not a gifted musician, you'll never achieve or attain to those that have that particular gift. There are those with the gift of music. They don't have to work at it like we would have to work at it if we tried to be musicians. There are people with artistic skills. It's just innate within them. They just can draw or they can sculpture or they can, but it's just a gift that God has given to them. And again, you know, I don't have any artistic kinds of abilities. You could give me the finest flowers in the world and say, now arrange a bouquet out of those, Chuck. <laughs> and it would look like hodgepodge when I was finished. It, it just wouldn't have, you know, the, the, the symmetry and all that. I, I just don't know how to put flowers together. And yet you can give someone else a handful of dandelions and they can arrange them in such a way that you say, wow, that's spectacular. I mean, it's just a gift that people have uh, and, and the ability. Uh, landscaping, you know, I put rocks in my yard for landscaping and it looks like someone just put the rock in the yard. <laughs> But you get a landscaper and, and I mean, he, he, you know, he places it, twists it, and, you know. And, but, boy, when he's through, it looks like they belong there. You know, when I'm through, it looks like someone, you know, you say, you ought to take that out of there, you know, that's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a gift. And, and we need to recognize that God has given to each person a, a particular uh, gift, uh, a gift, a adeptness at certain things. 
You remember in the Old Testament when God gave to Moses the pattern for the tabernacle and they began to build the tabernacle, God said of this man, Bezalel, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in the carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Now here was a guy that was gifted by God. God gave him this wisdom and knowledge in using his hands in all types, as a mason, in the cutting of the stones, and in the setting of the stones, as a silversmith, a goldsmith, in, in, in using the gold and the silver, and then in the carpentry and all. And it was just a gift of God. And we see people today that are gifted in these areas. Uh, gifted in uh, carpentry, gifted in uh, masonry and things of that nature, and, and they just have this gift and this talent for these things. Some are gifted with writing skills, and some are not gifted with writing skills who think they are gifted with writing skills. <laughs> But when you read someone who is truly gifted with writing skills, uh, their ability to put words together and, and to, you know, it just, it, you're touched, you're moved by it because it's, it's a gift that they have. Their, their ability to, to write in such an attractive way and to bring forth truth in, in such a subtle and interesting manner. There are those who are gifted athletes, and uh, they are, <laughs> I, I, would, I would never try to do some of the gymnastic things that I see people do, and I wonder, how in the world can they ever do that? And don't you try, you'll break your neck. You know, but people are gifted in different ways things. And so each of us have been gifted by God. You say, well, I don't know that I've been gifted. I'm pretty much of a blah. No, no. God has given you a special knack, a special talent, a special ability, and he wants you to use that for his glory. In using it to bless others and in ministering to others. It's important that we all discover the gifts that God has given to us and then to use those gifts for God's glory. Bach used to write on every composition to the glory of God. And Paul said, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all to the glory of of God. And so in using the gift that God has given to you, it, 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 just think of it as though you may not with Bach write it with pen to the glory of God, but just think of it. I'm doing this for the glory of God. God has given me this ability, this talent, this, this special knack, and I'm going to use this to minister to the church the grace of God, and I'll do it for the glory of of God. There are people who prostitute the gifts of God and they use those gifts for their own glory. And there are those that never acknowledge the gift as coming from God. You remember with King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel spoke to him and said, You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given to you a kingdom and power and strength and glory. God's given this to you, Nebuchadnezzar. But later on, Nebuchadnezzar said, Is not this great Babylon that which I have built 
by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Daniel said, it's God that gave you this. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is saying, I did this. And so God let him go insane. He lost his mental faculties completely. He began to live like an animal. He was eating grass out in the field with the oxen. He wouldn't come in at night. The dew of heaven would be upon him at night. And his nails grew long like claws and his hair long and matted until he acknowledged and recognized that it was God, the God of heaven, that sets over the kingdoms those whom he would. Paul said, what makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you glory as though you didn't receive it? If you have any special skill or talent, it is because God has given it to you. Not to be used for your glory, but it's for the glory of God. And every gift will always find its highest and its greatest value when you use that gift to minister to others the grace of God. That's why God gave it to you. And so the gifts are that God might be glorified in all things, Peter tells us, through Jesus Christ. They are to bring glory unto God, and we are to use them in such a way as they do bring glory unto God. Paul said, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all to the glory of God, giving thanks to God and the Father by Jesus. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they will glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Earlier, we sang, to God be the glory great things he has done. If God has used you in any way, giving you special talents and has used those talents, then make sure that God receives the glory. Acknowledge and recognizing that, as Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's God's gift. I use it for him and for his glory. Speaking of God, Peter says, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. It's interesting to me that when John was taken up into heaven, as he records in Revelation chapter 4, the first thing that arrested his attention was the throne of God, the glory of the throne of God. And he saw the cherubim, those angelic beings around the throne of God, giving glory unto God as they declared, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is, which was, and which is to come. And then as John saw the response of the 24 elders about the throne of God, as they cast their golden crowns on the glassy sea, and they said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive the glory and the honor and the power. For you have created all things, and for your good pleasure they are and were created. To God be the glory now and forever, as Peter goes on to say, forever and ever, the glory 
unto our Lord. Do you know what your gift is? That special capacity that God has entrusted to you as a steward of God? Are you using that for him? You see, he's entrusted it to you, but as a steward, you're to use it for him, for his benefit and good. To use it any other way is to prostitute the gift of God. So we pray. Father, we ask today that you might show unto us just what you would have us to do, that our lives might be lived for your glory, and that we might minister, Lord, the grace that you've given to us unto others. And so help us, Lord, to be faithful stewards, using that which you've entrusted into our care for your benefit and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? The pastors are standing down here in the front to minister to you as soon as we're dismissed. If you don't know what your gift is, then I would encourage you to come down and let them pray with you and pray for you. Paul, writing to Timothy, said, Stir up the gift that is in you that was given unto you by the laying on of the hands of the elders. Again, he wrote to Timothy, don't neglect the gift that is in you. So God has given you a gift. Use that gift. But a lot of times you need to discover what the gift is. And so I would encourage you to come on down. Now, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to all of us is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of his son. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Wonderful gifts of God. He's given those to all of us. But then those special enablings, that unique thing that you are, he made you as you are. And you have capacities and abilities that no one else has because you are distinct, created by God for his glory. And he wants you to live your life for his glory and to use the uniqueness that you are for his benefit, that special abilities. Use them for him. And you'll find that there will be such fulfillment, just so rich. Your life will become so full. Because you are using now what God has given as God would have you to use it for his glory. May the Lord be with you and may he bless you as you commit your life to serving as a good steward of those things that God has entrusted into your care.